Welcome back to part bazillion <laughs> of getting the old 40 back on the road. Last week we pretty much got our brake system done. Well this week we're going to make her steer. Well, they just started combining that cornfield right there. They're stirring up a whole lot of dust. I hate to see that too, because I won't feel as secluded without that corn there. No, sir, sure won't. But anyway, um, let's get under the car real quick, like, and uh, we'll recap what I'm going to do. Well, let them get on by with that loud thing. Then we'll get under here and uh, recap what I'm going to do as far as mounting this bracket pinion. Let me just show y'all real quick again how I'm going to do this. There's going to be a plate mounted to the bottom of this frame right here. I'm going to have a plate coming down this way. And then remember, this is cut out here. So there's going to be a piece of uh, bar stock here that helps locate the rack. Then I'm going to have my gusset pieces coming down on either side to strengthen it up. And I think it'll be okay. I might tie the two mounts together. We'll just have to see. You know, it just strengthened it up. Because uh, I don't want my steering to fall off, you know. Also, uh, well, I got my clamps. They come in a couple of days ago. I'll show you them in a minute. Um, we'll get into more about the tie rod ends and whatever later. But it's got to be this low. One, because my fittings are going to hit my frame here. Two, you want your tie rod end, your pivot point out here, the inner part. You want it about the same location as the pivot point on your bottom A-arm. So that's why it's got to be down this low and you want them the same length. We'll go over that. Well, I'll tell you what. If I can find me a piece of cardboard, I'll sort of explain tie rod ends and bump steer to you. Let's do that. Here's my illustrious drawing. I told y'all I was an artiste before I become a mechanic. <laughs> don't mind my dirty cardboard. That's all I can find. I need to get me a chalkboard. I don't want a whiteboard either. I want a chalkboard. I'm old school. Anyway, um, let me show you what we got here. This right here is your lower control arm. This is the spindle right here. This is the upper control arm. This is the steering arm. Uh, you have to look at this like they're a big circle. That's traveling in a circle. That's traveling in a circle. If they are, if they are the same length, the tie rod and the lower control arm, if they are the same length and your pivot points are on the same axis, they will travel the same arc. You won't get any bump steer. If you shorten one or the other, and usually it's the tie rod end, that, or the tie rod that's shorter, so you put the pivot point here instead of here, well, it's gonna be traveling in a lot tighter circle. When it does that, well, let's just go over to the car, I'll show you. Here's the steering arm, there's the lower control arm. You know, they're on pretty much the same plane, and you want them the same length. Um, if this is shorter, it's gonna be a lot shorter tighter circle radius and something has to move when this goes up and down this assembly the wheel and the suspension all when it goes up and down something's got to give because they're not traveling on the same arc of the circle well what happens the only thing that can give is this this tire this wheel and it's going to do that right there in and out that's your bump steer you will feel that in the steering wheel you hit a bump steering wheel will do that it can be bad enough that it can be dangerous yes sir but i do think that the way I'm going to mount it and do all my tie rods. I think we'll be just fine and dandy. So let's get right over here, start making us some mounts and get this rack and pinion mounted. All right, my first piece, I'm making this out of quarter inch, four inches wide. First piece is going to be five inches long. And I think I'm going to go ahead and when I cut one, I'm going to cut for the other side too. That way I ain't got to refigure, rethink everything. So anyway, let me get this first piece cut. And then we'll go to drilling holes and doing all that stuff, get it mounted on the frame. You got to cut. I'm marking my holes. I already got a mark. I'm going to put me a punch mark. There they go over and drill them out. Oh, 
Holes in the top plate are drilled, but I ain't got no bolts. No, sir. Uh, I want to use grade eights on this and the clamp. That's the clamp, by the way. Got it in the mail the other day. But I don't have grade eight bolts. I don't have any bolts, really. So I got to go to the bolt store. But let me tell you all this firstly. Remember uh, how we discussed a bolt bin the other day? Well, I contacted that company. It's boltsandnuts.com, by the way. Anyway, I contacted them, and uh, they were quick about getting back to me. But it was the response I thought I would get. Um, he said, what did he say? Our quota for sponsorships for the year is full. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Uh, he said he'd keep me in mind. But, fellas, I'm a small channel. I'm not going to get any sponsors right now. Uh, well, matter of fact, they had an, a link on their website that said influencers. Well, I clicked on it, and it's people they're sponsoring. And it was eight or ten of them, and they're all... A million subscribers are, you know, really close to it. And I got 65,000. I'm a far cry from that. So I'm not going to get sponsored by pretty much anybody right now. But anyway, I'll just buy my own boat bin. I found one the other day. I think I'm going to buy it. It ain't cheap. But it's better than running to the store uh, every day or two and getting bolts. Anyway, off to the bolt store I go. Well, I'm back from the bolt store. As you can see, I got two bags of bolts. But not before making two trips to the store. Yes, sir. Um, got all the way there, and well, I didn't have my wallet. <laughs> I had to come all the way back home, go all the way back to the store, come all the way back home. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, if my head was not attached to my body, I'd forget it. Anyways, let's get this clamped up to the frame, go to drilling our holes, then we'll continue on making all the pieces and parts for the uh, bracket there. I gotta get this here rivet out of the way, firstly. Remember we discussed that, I think, a couple videos ago. Anyway, I gotta cut it out of the way. I really hope I don't hit my break, new brake line either. Get out of here. Oh yeah. Let me grind that smooth a little bit. All right, now, where's my plate? Let me get it up there and get it in place where I got to be. The farthest forward I can go is right there before I get to that cutout place, so I reckon that's gonna have to do. Where's my clamps at? All right, I think it's where I want it, so instead of using a punch, I'm gonna use this drill bit to mark the center, and then we'll go to a smaller bit. The reason you use a smaller bit to begin with, that big old drill bit, it won't cut real good in the middle. It just makes it easier to start small and step your way up. But I use that drill, you know, as a center punch, basically, is what I did. Let me get a bolt in that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tighten it up. All right. There's one. Let me do that three more times and I'll be back. All right. I have decided uh, over the last hour or so under this car pondering how I'm going to do this. I need to do both sides at the same time. So, as you can see, I got the other plate done on the other side. Um, it's, well, this is the tedious part that I really hate when it comes to fabricating. And, uh, it, it's hard to video thinking. That's what I've been doing for an hour. Makes for a long day, but a short video. But anyway, you got compound angles on this, because this frame is not, you know, level side to side or front to back. You know, it's cocked a little bit this way, and it's back and forth and twisted. And, well, it's, it's three angles that I've got to worry about. So that's why I'm going to do both sides at one time. What I'm going to do, get this one up here where it's going to go. And then, you know, we got this piece of 
seven eighths square that's going in here. What I'm gonna, I know how long it is and I know where it is up and down and I got a pretty good idea this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack that seven eighths square to this and put it up here and clamp it to the rack and pinion then tack her in place here. Then I can go ahead and make my other stuff, but I will do that on the other side too before I make my side pieces. So let me get out in front of here and cut a little bit of metal and uh, do a little bit of tacking and I'll be right back. Where are my glasses? Oh, here they are. I found them, I found them. Alrighty, as you can see, I got my stuff cut and got it clamped. Of course, there's my clamp on the uh, rack and pinion. There's that seven-eight square and then there's the quarter-inch plate. All squished together with my clamp. I'm gonna make this identical for the other side. Go put it on and then that'll get me level this way. And then these plates here, I'm just gonna level them with the world. You know, it's not that critical. I do need it cocked that way a little bit you know, due to this. Anyway, get them level, tack them, and then we can go to making our side pieces, or, you know, our side gussets, and uh, get them tacked in, and that'll pretty much be it. Change of plans. This is what we're doing firstly. Um, it's really, really, really aggravating to try to hold a plate, this, a clamp, and a vice grip clamp, all at the same time, and get them all square and even, and well, let me tell you, I, I try to keep this a family show, and that's, that's why I didn't video <laughs> any of that. Anyway, what we're going to do to make this much easier is I'm going to go ahead and mark these holes, drill and tap them. Then I can put some bolts in there, and that eliminates two things that I got to hold. So let's get that done. I'm going to do it for this other side, too, I reckon. That is the correct size. Let me find my Homa. Homa, where you at, Homa? Go ahead and make us a punch mark right here. That hole's slotted, so I gotta get her centered up best I can. All right, let's drill this. Five sixteens. Uh, I gotta look and see what drill bit I need. All right, let's see if we can't tap her. Get some threads on this sucker. For those who don't know, the reason I'm backing that up after about a half a turn, well, it sort of clears the threads out. If you just jam her on down in there, you're gonna break her, trust me. Oh yeah. So you back her up just a little bit, clearing threads out. Alright, as far as my tap will go, I hope that's deep enough. You should do this before you tap, but I usually forget. Just countersink it just a little bit. And it makes it so much easier to get the bolt started. Alright, let's uh, mark this one and do the same thing. I'll be right back. Alright, there's hole number two. Let me do the other side, and maybe we can get this tacked up. Well, my bolts, they stick through just a little bit too far. Let me hit them with the grinder real quick. Well, I got my pieces clamped, as you can see. Then I got a phone call. They said, I got pizza. That's all I needed to hear? Yes, sir. I told y'all I'm a grown boy. I got to have my food. <laughs> Pizza is my weakness. Pizza and donuts. Well, let me rephrase that. Pizza from anywhere except Domino's is my weakness. Domino's is disgusting. Anyway, I uh, went and ate, and that was some pretty good stuff. It's getting kind of late, as you can see. I'm going to keep on working for just a little bit longer. I'd like to get these pieces here tacked level, plumb, whatever you call it. Get them tacked in place. We might call it a day, and then tomorrow we should be able to finish that up. Well, i got a small issue. This plate is hitting... This fitting boss, you can see where it's done rubbed the paint off of it. I'm gonna sit it up here 
mark it. We're going to have to cut that out just a little bit. I tell y'all what, it has took me quite some time to get this darn thing square and level. Let me get it tacked before it moves. Goodness gracious, this about wore me out. All right, let me go to the other side and get it all straight and square. We'll tack it. All right, little buddy. Are you level? Pretty doggone close. Let me twist it just a little bit, about right there. I think I'll do it. Let me tack it for a boost. All right, let me run around and check everything. If it looks good, I'm gonna put a couple more tacks on it. It is not bad. Let me go to the other side. Well, everything looks pretty good. I done put a tack over there. Let me put one more over here. We'll get this jack out of the way. Take this clamp loose. I cheer. And I don't know how I'm gonna get that, <laughs> that strap out of there. No, sir. May have to cut it. Well, I almost do must. I forgot that I gotta weld that bar to this plate before I can get that jack out from under here. So let me do that real quick. All right, let me go to the other side and get it. Then we'll get this jack out of the way. All right, let's see if we can get this jack out of the way. All right, let me... Well, something got her. I don't know what it is. All right, get off of the jack, you stupid little whatever you are. Now comes the fun part of trying to get this back up in here. I think I'll start over yonder. Let's do that. All right, let's see if I can't get this bolt started. All right, we'll go to the other side and start another one. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get this in here started. All right, where's my gun? It's way over yonder. Well, I think I'll go back over there and put that other bolt in. Well, the art is it is tacked in. Let me tell you, that like to wore me out fighting that thing. Goodness gracious alive. Whew. Let me get up here and look at the other side of it. There's a the clamp. There's a the bar. There's a the piece of plate. Um, once we get our little side gussets made, then we'll have to pull it off and weld everything up. But that ain't happening tonight. I am wore out. Going in the house. See y'all tomorrow. But wait, there's more. Uh, as most of you know, I started a second channel over the weekend. Posted a video Sunday evening, Sunday night, somewhere in there. Um, you ain't got my 3,000 subscribers, fellas. We got we to gotta pump them numbers up. Oh, yeah. It's got about 17,000 views the last time I looked. But the subscriber numbers, we got to get them up. Um, there's a link in last week's video description. Yeah, the description is right below the video here. Uh, there'll be one in this week's in the description. Um, click that link. It'll take you to the new channel, which is This in That Garage Extra. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Do that on this channel, too, because if you don't do that, then you won't know when I'm when I posted another video. So be sure and do all that. Anyway, we're going in the house. See y'all tomorrow. Tis the next day. We got some more parts to make for our steering brackets. I got stuff to do this afternoon. 
Let us not dilly daddy. Let us get busy. All right, here's what we got to do. I gotta make my gusset plates. It's gonna come down a little bit, angle, and then be flat on the bottom. I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but this is angled down. Um, I got to know what that angle is, so what I got to do is get my protractor in here just like it's right here. And I gotta get down here and sort of eyeball it. It's not, you know, that critical, but I would like to have it pretty close. So, I basically got to eyeball my angle, it's going to be approximately right there. That looks pretty good. So let me get that out of there and lock her down. We'll go over there and draw some pieces out and go to cutting them. Well, I'm pretty sure y'all can hear that combine running in the background. For whatever reason, they just quit in the middle of the day yesterday. Well, they just started it back up. So you'll have to excuse the noise until they're done. Also, oh, by the way, that is a small file and it makes a very good scribe. It sure does. Anyway, the length has got to be seven and a half, and then this side over here, well, I have to figure that out. But this width is right here, almost two and a quarter. So let me go ahead and scribe that mark right there. Then I think, well, let's get the angle next. Get the angle next, the top angle one we just figured out. Just like that right there. Then, well, I think I might go ahead and cut this firstly. Then, basically how it's going to be shaped, it's going to come down, I don't know, probably an inch. And then we'll angle down till that's flat. Where is my mark at anyway? Is that it? Well, I've done lost my mark. Anyway, we're going to come down an inch or so, angle her down, and then it's going to be flat on the bottom instead of coming to a point. I don't like the looks of that. So... Let me cut this angle first, then I can continue on with this other side here. All right, now that I got the angle cut, I got to scribe this right here which it only needs to go down just a little bit. Then we're gonna angle and be flat. Um, I need to figure out, well firstly, I gotta figure out where that mark went. Let me make another mark, because I don't see it. I don't see it, I'm blind. Now that I got this angle, I can put this back on 90 and uh, make me a mark across here. Goodness gracious. Some of y'all have made comments over the last video or two about me getting glasses. Fellas, I got glasses. I got reading glasses too. They don't do me no good. For whatever reason, my eyesight changes. And I'm not, I ain't even kidding, you know. One day the reading glasses will do great. Next day, can't see nothing. Anyway, that is on approximately 90 degrees. Put that there. Go ahead and make this mark right here. Then, um, I reckon we'll come down an inch right there. Let me get my scribe <laughs> here. We'll make us a mark at an inch right there. Then, um, I ain't sure how far we'll come out here. Let's do an inch there too, I reckon. Might as well, we'll see what it looks like anyway. All right, I need to go from that point to that point. And then that's all, that's what I need to cut, all them marks. Well, this fella here ain't cooperating. All right, there is my side gusset. Let me get this cut out. This will be a pattern. I'll make three more. Now 
Y'all saw how that that cutting wheel just stopped turning. Um, this is the brand, Benchmark Adhesives. Do not, I repeat, do not buy them. That's the third or fourth one that's done. It's this little silver piece breaks free, and it just spins. And it, well, it's junk. As soon as I get done with them, I ain't buying no more of them. piece done and it's going to go on the inside of the bolt I think that looks better than out here so that's what we're going to do about right there it fits up pretty good the angel it's a little bit off but I ain't worried about it because I got a welder and we can fill that little gap right in but the art is so let me make three more of these then we'll weld them up got all my pieces cut now we need to get them up in there and tack them what I've got to do firstly is stay off this nut so I can get a socket on it. And we're going to tack this corner. Then i got to get it right this way and this way. So let me get my welder out and we'll go to doing that. I'm going to say approximately right there is enough space. So let me put my tack right there. Alright now I gotta get my tape measure R. And we got to get this. Oh, wait a minute. Well, let's do that over. All right. Let me get my tape measure R, do a little measuring. We're at about seven eighths, maybe a little over. That's what we need to do back here. Well, believe it or not, we're really close. Approximately right there. Let me put a tack back here now. I need to do the same thing right here. Well, that's pretty doggone close. About right. About right there. All right, that piece is in place. Now, I gotta do the same thing over here. Approximately right there. I'm just eyeballing this right here on this nut. They ain't gotta be the same side to side. Let me get my welder over here. Approximately right there. I think will be good. All right, now I need to do the same thing right here. It needs to come out just a little bit. Woo! This one is tacked in. Got to do that over yonder, same way. And I might put me a couple of pieces right here. I think I will, just to help, you know, stiffen everything up. Anyway, let me get over and do that, and we'll pull them off, and we'll weld them up over on the table. All right, I got the other side tacked up, so let's go ahead and take the rack and pinion off, and get the brackets off, and get them welded up. out and let's weld her up Well, 14 bajillion years later, and these little fellers finally cooled off where I can handle them. I got them mounted on the rack. You might be wondering why. Well, we got another issue. 
Watch this clamp right here while I wiggle that mount. See it moving? It ain't tightening up. This one's tightening up, but not a whole lot. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it over to Mama's, throw it in the mill. We're gonna mill her down right here and over here. Oh, we'll start with an eighth inch. And if it ain't tight enough, well, we'll go down a little bit more till we do get it tight. So let me throw her in the truck and we'll head on over and do that. All right, I got her set up. This is not precision work, by the way. No, sir, this is get her done work. Anyway, let me, let me slot them two things real quick. We're only going down an eighth of an inch right now. What you do firstly, you just touch off on the top there, lock her down, and then my, my little depth gauge is right over here. And that's how I set how deep I want to go. We'll go eighth inch to what it does. Side real quick all right i got her tightened up shortened the bolts about quarter well probably about three eighths of an inch but let me tell you about her she is tight now she ain't a moving so i think that's gonna work let me do this in the same way and we'll head back over there and put it on the car well we now have a wrecking pinion mounted in the old 40. let's get under here and look at her not too shabby if i must say so myself i decided not to put any brace in here but i haven't made up my mind yet about connecting them you know making it basically like a cross member i do like i don't know one inch thick wall square tubing go from one side to the other just you know help strengthen it up a little bit i may do that i don't know we'll just have to see tomorrow we'll get our steering shaft and column and all that situated um i ain't got no tie rod ends I'll tell y'all about that maybe tomorrow, but right now, I got to get out the door, go do my second job. Y'all will see that, what I'm fixing to do, oh, in about a week on the second channel, so be looking for that. See y'all tomorrow. Tis the next day again, and let me show y'all this first. I got a bunch of partages in the mail last day or two. Here are my clamps, brake hose, brake line clamps. I ordered them over a week ago. <laughs> they just now got here. I don't understand it. There's bearings for the steering column we're going to work on in a little bit. Turn signal apparatus for this car. Here is the stuff to fix dude's headlight. And one of y'all told me about this on the second channel. Uh, you know how I had a little trouble out of that gas can. Uh, replacement spouts and look at here. It's got a drill bit so you can put a vent on it. That is just, well, that's, I don't know. I've never seen anything that awesome. <laughs> so I'll be changing that out on some of my gas cans sometime or another. Anyway, let me get this table cleaned off. We'll get the steering column up here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. Here are all the steering partages I got laid out right here. Well, here's my steering wheel, here's my steering shaft. Well, let me show you, let me show you this versely. Yes, sir, that's how that steering wheel is held on. We got to do, do a little bit better than that eventually. It's gonna have to work for now, but yeah, eventually we gotta do a little bit better than that. Here is the bearing insert that was in the end here. And there, it was not retained at all. And it was just like that on the shaft. And well, that ain't gonna work. So what I did, I got on the old YouTubes and uh, found a feller that showed you know, how to build your own custom steering column, because I've never done this before. Well, I figured you, know, you could use um, brass bushings, bronze bushings, Teflon, and it'd be just fine. It's just a steering shaft. Well, he, uh, he showed these little bearings right here. Never thought about using these. They're a flanged bearing. See that little lip on this side over here? And they will fit right up in there. They're a little bit loose, but they will fit up in there. Well, let me show you this tube first. She's been mangled, wop, wop gombled. I don't know how, but it has been. And anyway, we'll have to get that fit in there. And then I'm gonna tack it a few times around there. And then on the other end, this is the steering wheel end here by the way well it had a bear ink in there about about like this one and i tried to beat it out and well it wouldn't come out so uh what we're gonna have to do this little collar looking thing has been welded on here probably just gonna you know cut that off and put another one of these bear inks in here and then squish it all that because this has got a spring i think we'll leave it 
we'll squish it all together and then like i said i'll weld this one here then i'm gonna make me a little collar here that this will fit in and then there'll be a plate welded to it that will be bolted to the firewall i'll show you the inside here in a minute but that's the plan for the steering column and of course i got my u-joints so i think first thing we'll do let's just go ahead and cut this off and then we'll get the bearings in get them tacked in and then i gotta make a collar may have to go to mama's get on the lathe make a collar that that'll fit in here's a look on the inside of the car what we're working with um i'm not a fan of this steering wheel bracket but that's what i got so what's what we're gonna work with i think the original one was similar but it's a lot shorter um but i do like it because it's got three holes for gauges so you know we'll put like oil um temperature and i don't know whatever anyway um down here like i said i'm gonna have a collar that this tube fits in then that's gonna be welded to a plate the plate will be bolted to the firewall and uh we got a lot of holes to cover up good gracious that's where they had this steering column when we started you know to get away from the motor uh i have to cover all them holes up and then two i gotta get some seats because you know i don't really know how this is going to feel so one day next week we may go to the junkyard see if we can find some seats but anyway that's basically what it's going to be like minus this collar is going to be cut off hopefully that will be comfortable enough if not well we may have to redo it all right let's cut this collar off real quick like that way when we get our new bearing in the end of it All right, got that collar cut off. We got all the welds ground. And uh, this bearing, she fits dang near perfect, yes. Sir. So we're gonna put her in there and we're gonna put several tacks around there. Then we'll move on to the other end, do the same thing. Well, I got it tacked up all the way around, as you can see. I got the fan on it right here, cooling it, because that's a sealed bearing. If you heat it up real hot, well, the, all that grease is gonna ooze out. You can't grease it again. So I'm gonna let it cool off. I'm gonna come back and tack it all the way again until I get it completely welded up. Then we'll be good with that, and we'll, we'll go down yonder and do the same thing on that one. I got that bearing welded in, and I've decided you know, I was gonna leave a spring on there. Well, I'm not. Because it hits on the seal. I don't want that. So we're going to leave that out. Now I got to put it on this shaft. Just like it right there. Get another bearing. And line her up. And then get it knocked down in there. And get her tacked up. And then I think we'll have it. Well, I welded the second bearing in. And as you can see, it's no longer in there. I guess I got it so hot it just locked the bearing up. It won't turn at all. I got two more in that box. We got two more tries, and after that, well, we're done. <laughs> Let me see if I can weld it in there this time without it locking up on me. All right, let's try this again. I got me a wet rag this time. I'm just gonna do like four tacks, cool it off. Four more tacks, cool it off till we get her done. Pull it off, pull it off, pull it off. All right, I got her welded up. I got her cooled down. Don't look at them welds because, you know, that's just lots of little bitty tacks. I got to grind that down. But does that bearing turners are locked up? Oh, the bearing turns. Oh, yeah. Let me hit that with a grinder, clean it up a little bit. Then we'll move on to the next step. Well, we got that welded up. The bearing, it still turns freely, so that's awesome. Next, what I got to do is find me a piece of tubing that this will slip up in and be pretty tight. And then, you know, weld a plate to it, and that's going to be bolted to the firewall. Plus, 
um, I got to have a collar because I got to have something to keep that shaft from moving back and forth. So I'm gonna get a locking collar and put right here. Um, I've done checked in my corner of metal. I don't have any tubing that's the right size. So let's go over to Mama, see if there's anything over there. I can turn something down on the lathe, but that will take you know a long time. I don't wanna do it. So if there's nothing over there, I gotta run to town anyway to get a collar. We'll go by the metal store and see what they got. They may have something. Well, I had to go to the metal store. Got me a piece of pipe. That is D-O-M pipe, by the way. Drawn over mandrel is what that means. Um, it's just barely under the OD of this pipe, so we're gonna put her in the lathe, cut it out just a little bit till this fits, and then we'll be good. Ta-da! Off to the shop we go. All right, I got my plate all scribed out. Got my punch mark ready to go for my hole saw. Let me take you over here in the car and just show you what we're doing. This is the original hole where the original column went. That's where I'm going back. This plate shall go right here. And then I want my column at the bottom of that hole. That's why that's offset on this plate. I want it right here because I got headers right there in the way. So what we got to do is get over here on the drill press and drill it out with this inch and a half uh, hole saw. The reason you got to have that hole so big is because of this locking collar. It's going, you know, my shaft will be sticking out here. What's well, going there? So I got to have enough room for that to slip up in there. Inch and a half is just fine and dandily. So let's get over here and drill that out. I ain't real sure this little drill will run this uh, hole saw. But you know what? We're going to give her the old try. Give me some Earl put on that. That might help a little bit. Well, I don't have a squirt can over here, so we're going to see if the WD-40 will help it out a little bit. That was not fun at all. All right, let me clean this up. It's nasty. It's so nasty, man. What in the devil? What in the devil? Well, I got my hole cut out. This is gonna, you know, center it just like it right there, but I got to have bolt holes first. So I got them marked. Let's get over here and drill them out. All right, I got the plate done. Got my holes deburred with the countersink. Got this hole deburred. We got a little bit off center with our hole saw. Um, maybe eighth of an inch or so. It'll be all right, it ain't gonna matter. Now, what we gotta do is weld this right here, and then we'll be ready to assemble this and then get it in the car and drill our four bolt holes, bolt it up. We'll be done with the column. Then we get to work on the steering shaft. Well, we have a dilemma. I didn't account for the angle of the firewall. Well, what it is is this bracket up here is made for this hole right here. And I have moved it up and well, the angle is off and the, that plate doesn't lay flat with the firewall. So the only thing I know to do is make us do bracket up here. So let me pull this junk out and start making one. Change of plans. I'm not gonna worry about a, a mount up here right now. Let's just go ahead and get this mounted to the firewall then we'll worry about this later and also let me show you this you know we gotta we gotta um brace up our uh pedal assembly there you know because it was flexing well there's a brace from here all the way up to the top of the firewall so i think what we'll, do, we'll just come on the top of our pedal assembly come out here and, and hook it to that right there and i think it'll strengthen that up good so let me do that first let's get this steering column and steering shaft and all done then we'll worry about a, a clamp here and we're about bracing up that uh, pedal assembly later. I got three pins that are in my way. I got to cut them out first. Mm -hmm. 
and get our first hole punched and marked and drilled and bolted approximately right there I reckon we'll start with this one I might have to put it in the right way well I got some kind of mark had something to start with let me get my drill bits and all that drill me a hole right here All right, let me get a bolt. All right, let me go outside. Get that nut on there. All right, let's get her straight. Approximately right there. That firewall bent just a little bit too. Oh, it's bent her back. Approximately right there. Now, I'm gonna get that straight. Mark my second hole. Well, it's hard for y'all to tell, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to cut some off of this. It's sticking way up. I didn't think about this till just now, but the way that was mounted originally, I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but there's a piece of angle line right here they welded to the firewall, and then they just had it clamped. Well, it's the steering column itself, you know, the outer part, it's stuck down here, probably three inches lower than what this is now. So yes, sir, we'll most likely have to cut some off of this. Uh, but that's, I ain't worried about that, that's, that's easy stuff. I just wanna go ahead and get my shaft and all done up. So let's let's start working on that. Uh, all I gotta do, I got a new joint for here. Got one for down there. We gotta connect them basically. Probably gonna have to cut a little bit off this. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I got both my U joints on. There's one down yonder, one right here. I cut a little bit off the end of this steering shaft uh, cause it was a little close to the header. I, it's still a little close. I might cut a little more off. I can cut probably half inch at least. Got my collar on there too, by the way. But I gotta get me a measurement for my shaft. So let me do that and we'll cut it off and we'll put it in here and see what she looks like. And if I'm satisfied with the clearance on this header, we'll leave it alone. I've determined that I need 11 three quarter inches. But I'm gonna cut it 12 just to make sure I got enough and we can trim it if we have to. That right there I believe will do it. Let me see if I can't finagle this in here. Ow! Turn! Turn! Alright. I believe that length will be just fine and dandy. Yes, sir. I got probably a finger's width between it and the header. I think I'll leave that. I believe we're okay. Let me put some of my set screws in here and tighten it up. I went ahead and tightened up all the set screws and here's why. See that little circle right there? Well, it's about a half circle. That's the mark that the set screw made. What you wanna do is dimple that all quarter inch or so, and here's why. If you just slide that up in there, like that right there, uh, tighten set screws up, you can even use Loctite. Well, this, it still could come loose, theoretically, and you don't want that. So you dimple it, and if it loosens up a little bit, just from wear, well, that dimple won't allow it to slide out because, you know, the set screw's got it held. So I got to do all that. Um, oh, I got to do it four times on this. But here's something else I'm really concerned with, right? Cheer. The steering shaft coming out of the column is round. And here is the U-joint for it. Well, this end has no holes for set screws, uh, through bolt, or anything like that. And I got to thinking, I don't, I don't like that. That seems dangerous to me. If I just weld it to the shaft, if the weld breaks, then I have no steering. If I put a through bolt through it, if that bolt breaks, I have no steering. If I use set screws and they back out a little bit, I have no steering. So 
I'm going to eliminate this. What we're going to do, I got another U joint right here. It's a double D. It's a you know double D on either end. By the way, double D, it's flat on either side. It's three quarter shaft, but then they make it flat on both sides. That's called a double D. And it's much safer. So what we're going to do, uh, pull this steering shaft out, and I'm going to make it double D. I just put it in the mill and mill it down until this U joint fits. That's all you got to do. And here's why I'm doing that because, well, I'll tell you what, let me put this all back together and I'll show you. All right, I got the shaft back in. I don't have any set screws tight. As you can see, that shaft is moving up and down. Well, if that happened in the real world, all the set screws come loose. Um, with everything being double D, I can still, I can still steer. See that turning right down there? Um, but with it like it is right now, this being round, well, if it comes loose, watch that shaft up there. It's it's slipping on it, and I can't I can't have that. If this is double D, even if everything comes loose, I can still steer. You know that's dropped down all the way, but it's still engaged. I can still steer. So uh, most likely we're going to make this double D. Make me feel a little bit better. The only way I could have a problem that collar right there was to come loose. Well, then this shaft here could go up, and yeah, well. I'm, I'm screwed then. <laughs> so what I'll probably do on this collar is we'll dimple it for that set screw, put red Loctite on it. I'm going to put red Loctite on everything on the final assembly. Anyway, dimple that red Loctite, and then I may even weld it around there just for, you know, my peace of mind. I think, I think it'll be just fine then. Um, let me pull this out. We'll dimple them places there, and I'll show you all that. All right, I made my punch marks. This is a 5 16 drill bit because... The set screws are 5 sixteenths. So let's drill one and uh, we'll put it in the U-joint and see what it looks like. I'm going to go about a quarter inch deep. That'll probably be good right there. Let's go try that. Set screw's tight. And of course, you know, it's not going to move, but let me show you this. This is why you dimple it. Um, if it loosens up just from wear, not necessarily this turning, just from wear. Um, we'll see how it's it's moving, but it, it you can't slip it off. That's why you dimple them. All right, I got it all back together. Got the set screws tightened up. But like I said, this main shaft in the column, we're going to have to pull it out and double D it, you know, make it flat on either side and use this u-joint this double d on both ends that'll make it a lot more safer um and i won't worry as much about you know my steering falling apart and running into somebody and killing them i don't really don't want that to happen no sir um next thing is tie rod ends but we can't do them in this uh video and here's why you know i told y'all i was going to use s10 tie rod ends well i changed my mind a week or so ago uh that's what this is right here, the S10 tie rod end. And then here's your adjusting coupler. And then you'll have basically this over here too. You know, this kind of joint. I didn't want that. Um, well, I'll tell you what, let me, pull, let me pull that rack and pinion out and I'll just show you. Here's rack and pinion out of the old uh, Ford Fairmont. Remember that station wagon I pulled it out of last summer sometime? Well, here's the inner tie rod end on it. Looks a wee bit different than this S10 one, don't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, this will be easier for me to fabricate than this. And I just, well, I just think it'll look better. And that's just how I want to do it. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, like I said, I just decided I want to do this about a week ago. Well, I didn't know what tie rod ends I wanted to use. Because, you know, this rack and pinion over here is the center takeoff, remember? So we got to make an attachment point out here in the middle that this attaches to. And I... I I had trouble for the last week trying to find a tie rod end. Well, I needed the dimensions on them, and I couldn't find anything, any website that would give me dimensions. Well, I finally found it last night. It's called rareparts.com, and it'll give you all the dimensions of any tie rod end you look up. Um, so I got to look, and I spent an hour or two looking through tie rod ends. And lo and behold, you ain't going to believe it, but I ended up using 96 Pontiac Trans Am or Chevrolet Camaro uh, tie rods, inner and outer. Yes, <laughs> it was right there in front of my face the whole time. All I had to do was go look at it. But 
anyway you know how it goes so i ordered them last night they won't be here till next week so we don't have the parts to do that so we'll have to wait on it i think we'll end this video up right here waiting on parts and uh, i'm out of time so uh next episode we'll finish the steering gotta do the tie rod ends and it may be about time to pull this motor out and go to working on the firewall i want to see all these holes i mean they're just a bunch of holes i want to fill all them in we're gonna paint this you know clean it paint it real good so we'll be looking for that next episode don't y'all forget about my you know my second channel now need to get them subscriber numbers up oh yeah um also let me let me go through this in case people don't know. Well, firstly, let me tell you this. I have merch, hats and shirts and all that. It's in the description down below. Uh, the description is right here below the video, by the way. Click on it and it's all kind of links. That's the first thing I click on when I watch the video on YouTube. It'll give you all the information you need. Um, my email address, my pill box if you want to send me stuff, the merch link, and there'll be a link to the second channel there too. Be sure to go there, subscribe, Hit that notification bell. Also, uh, let me go ahead and tell y'all, we're going to change things up a little bit. Well, sort of, not really. Uh, we're going to take a break from the old 40. I got some will it runs I can do. Um, well, one of them I bought last summer sometime. Uh, we can do it. It's on the Mustang farm. There's a couple of farm trucks on the Mustang farm. I'm going to do them. Uh, recently, a subscriber gave me two pickup trucks. Yes, sir, sure did. Well, I'll tell you about them when we get to them. Uh, and by Will It Runs, y'all know they're resurrections, basically. They're dead. Should have been in the junkyard years ago. That's just what I do. Basically, rebuild the whole truck sitting in the dirt where it is. Anyway, be looking for that. We're going to, well, we'll do a couple of Will It Runs. Then we'll do a couple on the old 40, back and forth, just to break the monotony up. Also, also, uh, very recently, like in the last couple of days, I come across several more will it runs that we can do these will take us out of state so it's going to be interesting yes sir. be looking for all that in, in the coming months matter of fact next week we're going to do a will it run so be looking for all that anyway appreciate y'all watching hope you enjoyed it if you don't mind hit that like comment subscribe share it with your friends and until next time go do something blur blur